everybody, this is Ed Brzee. Sorry for the delay. We've had a little bit of uh, an issue here, and uh, I think we're underway. Um, Boomer Tech Adventures has been working for the last week on providing a number of tips, resources, information, and we hope inspiration. And uh, that's what this is all about. I'm communicating with my with my colleagues uh, via phone. So I've got a couple things going on. But we're, we're trying to provide in this very unusual time um, some help for all of you to stay connected, some information that's useful for you to do, and so on. And that's what this series is, is all about. Uh, yesterday you saw a great cooking video uh, live on Facebook Live right here with Chris Toy who did a very nice uh, piece on cooking um, multicolored pasta just for fun, giving you something to do, something you could do with someone else. Uh, a couple days ago, our other colleague, Jill Spencer, also a Boomer Tech Adventure Guide, took time to uh, spend time with us on um, uh, talking about three books. Sorry, I've got different people I'm listening to. Um, and that was great. Uh, three three great books that she mentioned. And, and as we're all thinking about doing more reading and that sort of thing. And those are the kinds of posts that we're doing. And that's what this is all about. So uh, do take a look on our Facebook Live page down below. Those uh, videos from the last couple of days are posted there. Um, they're short. Uh, they're very accessible and uh, take a look at those. Um, so we're all looking, this is, a, the, this is a very unusual time. It's unprecedented, obviously. A number of us are spending more time at home. We're working on social distancing. Uh, we can't connect people the way that we do. Um, and, um, and fortunately, if you have an Apple device, um, an iPhone, an iPad, a Mac computer, there are all kinds of ways that you can connect and i want to talk about one of those today and one of those is um, facetime which i assume a number of you are familiar with you probably use it um, eventually here in just a couple of minutes i'd like you to think about using it in in perhaps some different ways than you've done in the past so this morning jill spencer one of our bta boomer tech adventures colleagues wrote a great post called Stay Connected During Social Distancing with FaceTime. I'm looking at my other monitor to read that. It's a great post that actually walks you through how to use FaceTime um, in a step-by-step -step manner. And lots of screenshots, lots of help, lots of explanation with that. So I'm not going to repeat that here today on how to use FaceTime if you haven't used it. Um, and Jill is going to post that uh, link to that blog post down, the, um, uh, down below in the comments. So that's really good. So I really recommend that. And we're actually, we almost have finished a, um, a short video that will be on our YouTube channel, I suspect by tomorrow, I hope, about using uh, FaceTime too. So those will be two good resources on some of the specifics of using FaceTime and how to get started. So um, one of the other things that if, uh, one of the things about FaceTime is that it is an Apple to Apple uh, connection. So if you have an iPhone, an iPad, a Mac computer, you can connect to anyone else with one of those things. If you've got somebody else that has a PC a computer, or an Android phone, you can't make that, you can't do the FaceTime, uh, the uh, FaceTime video conferencing connection. But um, we'll talk about that later on um, in a day or two, uh, or later on this week. We're gonna talk about Zoom, Z-O-O-M, which is another video conferencing system and it has a free component and uh, we'll talk about how you can use that to connect with people no matter what what device they have and jill's just posted the um the blog post that i mentioned uh, that's in the comments right below this so take a look at that and that's that's a great blog post um 
Okay, so just a couple things about about FaceTime. Uh, just just to make sure you're clear about that. We're talking about Apple to Apple, so you've got to have an Apple device and the person on the receiving end has to have a, an Apple device, either an iPhone, an iPad, or a Mac computer. Um, you, you connect through a phone number or an email address, and if you're connecting on FaceTime on a Mac, um, that's the email address only. This is all explained in Jill's excellent blog post. And it's all, obviously it's all free if, if you're connected to Wi-Fi. If you're using it through a cellular connection, then you're using your cellular data. So let's talk about a couple other things. Um, it's relatively easy to use. You may have used it before. I'm sure you have to talk to grandkids or to relatives or to friends. And we're going to be seeing a lot more uh, people using this kind of a connection to uh, to stay literally to stay connected. So, but what I'd like to do now, just for a couple minutes, is to talk about a couple uh, what I think are interesting, and these aren't always original with me, but some interesting uses of, of FaceTime more than just a once a week or every couple days uh, connection with someone else, just for a conversation. So last Saturday night, my wife Connie and I did uh, what we call a virtual dinner with our kids and their kids, our grandkids in Minnesota. Obviously, we're not going to see them for a while. And uh, so we sat down. We, uh, they had dinner on the table. We had dinner on the table. And uh, we had um, a couple iPads on either end. And we moved them around so we could see each other. And so it was a nice dinner time conversation. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. We've used that in several different ways. I really recommend that. It's a nice way to, to connect with food as if you were out to dinner with someone. Is it exactly the same? No, but it really works very well. Um, in a similar vein, <coughs> excuse me, um, another way to use something like FaceTime would be to share an activity like a meal preparation, um, putting the meal together, or a baking session. I did, the, did that with my son in Troy, New York before Christmas, and we have a special uh, recipe on a particular kind of cookie that's kind of complex that we like to do. And so we were on for about 45 minutes while we were each um, working through the cookie recipe um, on our own end. That was a lot of fun. <clears throat> Excuse me, just a minute. I haven't done this personally, but I know that I've got friends that um, set up um, um, iPads or iPhones or, or computers um, on either end and play a game like chess or checkers. You could do the same kind of thing and, and that could go on for a while. FaceTime doesn't cut out after uh, any particular time, um, so you could just let that run for a while and, and just have a way to connect that way. I think that's great. Uh, yesterday, uh, my wife Connie and I did a grandparent-led um, exercise session with um, our granddaughter and two of her little friends who are home from school now, and we connected by via FaceTime and we ran them through some exercises as we were doing them. We could look at them and make suggestions. They could follow our lead on the other end. That was just a lot of fun. We've also done, I know people are doing um, online yoga now, and that's available. You certainly could do any kind of an exercise session with, uh, with friends or relatives as well. Um, other ideas, story time. These are grandkids or, or suggestions for perhaps your family that you can't see right now, but uh, story time, reading to kids, doing an art project um, or whatever, or um, let the kids tell you a story back. Have them with hopefully a, a, an iPad or an iPhone walk around the house and, um, and tell you a story or tell, tell you what, uh, what they're doing, what kind of a project that they're doing. So lots of very creative ways to use uh, FaceTime. Um, I think we need to use it more and more. There are a number of times when it's really important 
to check in, especially with older relatives, that we need more than just a phone conversation. We really need to say hello to them and, and see how they're doing and look at them. So those are a few ideas. Um, read Jill's blog post, please, and go back and look at a couple of the other um, uh, Facebook Live videos that we've done, especially Chris's and Jill's the last couple of days, and look for that um, YouTube video that we'll have up tomorrow. We'll, we'll put that on, on our regular page that will give you some more specific ideas about using FaceTime Live. Okay, be safe, be kind, be good to everybody, take care of yourselves, and thanks for tuning in. This is Ed Brzee with Boomer Tech Adventures.